Now we could solve the system by matrix reduction, and we will. But right now we're going to use substitution, which is something we haven't used a lot, but it's what everybody wanted to do at the beginning of this course. So we're going to actually use it here uh, just for expedience, okay? And to show that this is a uh, system can be solved or it can be translated into something meaningful that will give us an answer to our question. We take the first equation and we solve it for d v2, and then we're going to substitute that v2 here, and then we'll have an equation in just lambda and v1. So, solving, we multiply by negative one-half, so we get v2 equals negative one minus lambda over two times v1. And then we plug that in for v2 here, so we're going to have four minus lambda here times v2, which is this, okay, this quantity times v1, negative, etc., and that's got to equal 3v1. Okay, well, this equation, well, it, okay, we, we multiply through by negative 2 to get rid of that negative 2, and we have this equation. Now, an obvious thing we can do to simplify this equation is we can divide through by v1. Now, this actually indicates that it doesn't matter a bit what v1 is. If we're going to get a solution, this equation has to be true, and then it's going to be true for any value of v1, except 0 because we divided by 0. Uh, but we divided by v1. We can't divide by 0, so v1 couldn't be 0. Okay, That wouldn't be a useful solution. Okay, so again, taking these two equations, we solve this one for v2, plug in here, rewrite what we have. Uh, multiply by negative 2 and then divide by v1 and we get this. Now this actually has a name, it's called the characteristic equation, but you get that from reading. Can we solve this equation for lambda? We get an equation in lambda. If we can solve it and get a real value for lambda, then we've got it. We've got a lambda that makes this true, a real value of lambda, giving us a real vector uh, and we'll be able to see how that vector maps on itself. However, that we're not going to get a solution. Uh, we multiply this out, we get this. We add 6 to both sides, we get this. Now, how do we solve this equation? Um, the response in class was not as instantaneous as I would have hoped. This is a quadratic equation. We look at the discriminant. And if you don't know that, as I said in class, and if you haven't made that judgment <coughs> at least 100 times in your mathematical background and reinforced it, then your mathematical background has been insufficient. Um, and you got to upgrade. I'm not saying that to put you down. I'm saying that because this is really important. And you've just got to know this. You can't go through a mathematical life without knowing the theory of quadratic equations. You use it all the time. Um, and it builds into other things that my multivariable calculus students, for example, are dealing with right now uh, in multi multiple dimensions. So you really have to know it now because you probably have that course in your future. Well, I'm done raving. Uh, this doesn't have a solution because the discriminant is negative. There's no real solution. Ain't no vector going to transform to a parallel vector. That's our conclusion here. And that's cut and dried, airtight. If we've done the arithmetic right, we have determined that there's no way.